Welcome back to chapter 11. This is our third example in the chapter, and it's our second example of buoyant force. And as with all of these buoyant force problems, it will be worth watching all of the examples and seeing the comparisons between how the structure of each of these problems is similar and what small things are different that we have to be aware of. Okay, so our goal here is to f find the mass of ice required for this ice block that will be able to basically just hold the person out of the water, which means the entire ice is submerged, um, but the person is not. So we start with a picture, as always. So we have the water, we have the ice, and we have the person out here in the air. Now we talked in the lecture video, and it's worth commenting here, that when we have solid objects, like people, in air, the buoyant force is small enough that we can ignore it. So we won't have to worry about the buoyant force of the person for this example, um, but we do have to worry about the buoyant force of the ice. So when we look at the forces, we're going to draw the free body diagram of the ice, because that's really the, the object that we want to focus on um, here. So when we look at the forces acting on this ice, we have the force of gravity of the ice itself, so the weight of the ice, which is the mass of ice times g, 9.8, and we have the person's entire weight pushing down on the ice. So we also have the weight of the person. So Fg person here is the mass that we were given times g, and so it's 70 times 9.8, and so we get 686 newtons. Okay, and then if we thought about this as a chapter 4 problem, that would be the only things that we could consider from our chapter 4 understanding. But we have added our knowledge now in chapter 11 that when we have objects in a fluid, like water, the buoyant force is able to push back up on the ice and is pushing upwards to be able to balance both of those weights together. Now, just like the um, other example and the examples that we will see moving forward, we are looking at a situation where nothing is moving. The net forces add up to zero. Okay, so that means that the one buoyant force up has to balance the two gravity forces, the two weights, down. So buoyant force minus the weight of the person minus the weight of the ice equals zero. So we can elaborate a little bit here. For the buoyant force, we can write that out, that the density of the fluid times the volume of the object, so the volume of the ice here, times 9.8, I'm just going to write times g. For the person, we have 686 newtons. And the ice, we have the mass of ice, which is our unknown, times our g value here as well. Okay, so if we look at this, um, first of all, g is a known quantity, 9.8. And the mass of the fluid here, that's water, so that's 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. So that's known also. It looks to us, if we kind of forget the other parts of chapter 11, it looks like we don't know what the ice volume is and we don't know what the mass of the ice is. Two unknowns means this becomes what seems to be unsolvable. But just like with the iron in the previous example, because this is talking about the same object, we can talk about the density as a way to find one of our unknowns in terms of the other. We know that the density of ice is 917 kilograms per cubic meter. So if we multiply both sides by volume here, we have that the density of the ice times the volume of the ice is equal to the mass. Okay, And so we can replace that instead of the mass. All right. 
we're far enough down the uh, board here that I'm gonna take back our topmost area. But we have that the density of the fluid is a thousand. We can have volume of the ice be what we solve for first, and then G is 9.8. So that's the first term, that's the buoyant force. The weight of the person is still 686. And then the mass of ice, we are now rewriting as the density of ice, which is 917 times the volume, but also still times that 9.8. So super tiny in the corner, but I'm going to rewrite it again here, uh, kind of cleaned up a bit. I'm going to add 686 to both sides. So plus 686, plus 686. So cleaning this up to give us some space to solve. We have 686 newtons on the right side. We have 98 100 volume of the ice minus 917, 917 times 9.8 is 89.90 V ice rounding, which means we can take those two terms and bring them together. It's kind of like having 5x minus 2x. We just combine those terms. So 9,800 minus that 89,90 is going to be um, 810 V ice equals 686. We'll divide both sides by 810. And so the volume of our ice is 0 0.85 cubic meters. That is not quite the end of the problem, but it's worth taking a note um, here. One thing that is a little bit troublesome for us in chapter 11 is that we really don't have a good mental image of what a cubic um, meter looks like. This is actually a huge volume of ice, even though that number doesn't really feel that big to us. We just don't have a lot of practice um, imagining a cubic meter um, which means a meter sideways, a meter front and back, and a meter up and down. So to go from volume to mass, we can just use the equation that we have saved down here in the corner, that the mass, which is what we're really looking for at the bottom here, is the density of that ice times the volume. So 917 times that 0.85 is the mass of the ice that we're looking for. And so the mass of the ice that we're looking for ends up being 780, with some rounding, 780 kilograms. That's a huge amount of ice. That is more than 10 times, um, more than 11 times the mass of the person that is, it is trying to hold up. So this problem, we had to cycle through this board, so you can always rewind to see the earlier steps. This problem had the same flow of the previous one. We drew a picture and we drew a free body diagram. We wrote out all of the forces added up together, which ended up being the buoyant force up, the weight of the person down, the weight of the ice down, and that equaled zero. Then we plugged in numbers that we had and realized that we needed to think about the fact that density is a way for us to go back and forth between mass and volume if we need to write one in terms of the other. And then we solve for our final value. And you might have had some different rounding here, and that's perfectly fine. Um, I'm just trying to make these numbers kind of simple to look at and think about. So as you continue these problems, um, comparing this one to the previous example, 11b, comparing it to the next upcoming two examples, Make sure that you're seeing those overall um, steps in the problem. And uh, before, we, before we close this particular video out, I do want to point out that we commented on the fact 
that the volume does seem small because we're not really good at understanding what a cubic meter is. The volume of a single person, if we just kind of make an estimate, um, is less than a tenth of a cubic meter. So we want to make sure we understand that the check to see if our numbers make sense, um, if we don't have the kind of intuition for what numbers are big or small, we might not necessarily really be able to do a very solid check, and that's going to be okay for us. So I will see you in the next video.